a playing a pedophile. I think it was you. You pointed at me. I was like, <laughs> what the fuck, man? Like, what did I do? <laughs> like, damn. Like. Hey, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of the Cancel Podcast. My name is Bardia. I'm here with Kurosh. Hey, guys. What's up? And, uh... Well, you guys keep saying what's up. I guess I'm like, there's an answer. <laughs> Please, I don't know. Can it's someone in the comments <laughs> once reply? So at least, like, <laughs> no, the, every YouTuber has a catchphrase. And I feel like now, all of like for like greetings when they start their video, like what's going on or like whatever it is, now everything is taken. So I like start overthinking. I don't know. Like, yeah, what true. do I say? <laughs> like, hey. there is no, uh, yeah, I get, but there's not trade, there's no trademark to it. So yeah, like, but like big youtube channels that like have been doing this for years right their catchphrase is known to them so yeah. when their audience see other people doing it they're like stop doing that shit so yeah. this gets in my head so every time I'm like eh, what's up <laughs> you fair know? enough yeah i'm gonna just <laughs> well the, it's gonna be very awkward for the people who listen to some the audio yeah. <laughs> i have to be like he is doing the finger gun the, <laughs> the, what do you call gay it gay cowboy <laughs> gay cowboy <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Faisal is not with us today. Yeah, that's why he didn't get the intro. <laughs> not because he's been <laughs> he just waiting. He's like, guys, can we <laughs> say yeah. my name now? Yeah, yeah. So Big Daddy got him. And for, <laughs> <laughs> for people who listened to the last episode, that was a good you know episode. what? Who Big Daddy is? And if you haven't listened, go have a listen. <laughs> we recommend giving him a lesson. Yeah, yeah. By the way, speak up. One thing about that, Big Daddy. No, no, no. Oh. The last episode. Okay. So. I you, you saw the shirt I was wearing, right? Yeah. And it had our logo sort of on the thing. Yeah. It was a hot ass fucking shirt. Like yeah. it was fucking boiling. The whole shot, because of this thing, yeah, it was blocked. <laughs> so the effort was <laughs> nothing came out of it. <laughs> Bro, the whole time, like it was this I kept looking at it during the shot. I was like, dude, are you fucking kidding me? Oh, the product placement. Bro, <laughs> fucked you. <laughs> I was struggling. I was legit struggling. Like, it was boiling. And then when I saw the, like, the first draft, I was like, what the fuck? Like, like <laughs> no, honestly, our last episode looked too, like, we we're selling mugs or some shit. Like, yeah. each one of us had, like, fucking the big one, three the things in front of them. Yeah. Fish. The shot for Faisal and I, because both of oh, us. Oh, yeah, you were together. We had like, like four, four yeah. like that. And like, if you saw a glimpse of my shirt, you're like, dude. Yeah, like, they just felt like one of those, like, you know, people who stand on the corner of the street and they like lay out <laughs> their shit, shit on the yeah, floor. Yeah. And they, you're leaving Tom bags, here's your cancel mugs. Yeah. <laughs> we got the big one, we got yeah. large, medium, skinny, fat. Like, what you got? <laughs> yeah. Anyways. So, for the, for the audience to know, just before the camera rolls, we were talking about comedians. And, uh, you told me something about Chris Daly. I don't remember, but we said, let's pause that conversation yeah. and just continue it now. Yeah, because, like, legit, sometimes we start talking, we're like, we, we forget to turn the, the cameras on, on now. Yeah. Like, not when we're like, imagine we get, so what are we going to talk about today? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so no, you were saying something about Chris Daly. Yeah, because, like, you were saying about how you do comedians, like, you wait to watch the shows. Oh, yeah, okay. And so, then, to give some context, uh, I was telling Barry that for me, like, to watch comedy specials, I have to be in a specific mood to watch them. I can't just have them as a background, otherwise I won't enjoy them. So usually I don't watch like comedy special for like four months, then I watch like eight of them in two days. Yeah. And then you said you start talking about Chris D'Elia, then we realize the cameras aren't on. Yeah. So basically I was saying that like I I do the same thing, but like I don't put a gap. I watch them like pretty like always. And um Sometimes I go back to it, like I watch Chappelle, all of a sudden, like all back to back, Ricky Gervais, back to back. And then, so, <laughs> and then uh, Chris D'Elia, I mentioned, Chris, and you said, what do you think about Chris D'Elia? I have no idea what the allegations are. I genuinely meant, what do you think of his comedy, not the allegations? I like his comedy. Uh, the allegations were a couple of years ago, and I don't think there was anything to it, because nothing ever happened, but it was child molestation. No, but I think it was about this girl, and then he married her, or something like that. Like I, I don't know, something. Oh, I don't know about that one. I wish we. But uh, what I remember was apparently he went. I don't know if this was multiple people or one person, but 
uh, some girl texted him either after a show or before a show when he was visiting a town. And then uh, they were texting. She was supposed to go over. And then this was the text that went like viral. Yeah. But then I think if I remember this correctly, uh, I can't be imagining this on my own, but then he released a full text that after it, he asked, by the way, how old are you? And she says she's under and he didn't do it. Uh, but the issue was he was on the he was on one of these shows on Netflix, uh, playing a pedophile. I think it was you or some yeah. I th- you know the show you. That oh, you pointed at me. I was like, <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck, man? Like, what did I do? <laughs> like, damn. Like, Jesus Christ. Oh, have you heard of the show you yeah, on yeah, Netflix? Yeah. Yeah. I think he was on like season one or two of that as like a. I'm actually gonna watch that show. I've it's pretty a, good. I've heard a lot it's of pretty good. things about it. I love the storytelling because the guy, just, I'm not going to spoil anything. The guy is a creep and also violent and like stalkerish and all of that. But somehow season after season, he does fucked up shit. But you still vouch, like you, you want, want him, him to, to get away yeah, with yeah. It. There's a lot of twists in it and all of that. But like throughout all the stockings and all everything that he's got he does in the show yeah you still kind of like you're like yeah i get i kind of get what i mean he's <laughs> fucked up but like you know i don't want him to go to jail like you want it to continue yeah kind of i'm i'm gonna give it a try yeah it's, I, to me that's reviews. that's good storytelling like when you make a person that like the definition of the character on paper is evil or like someone that if someone told you just the descriptions without the like knowing yeah. the person, you'd be like, "Yeah, put him under the jail, yeah. or put him in jail and tell everyone to rape him." Like, yeah, that level I mean, of thing. Yeah, okay. <laughs> no, but you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, but him, like, once you get to, because the whole show is, uh, he's narrating it as if, like, I like as his he, voice. Yeah, he has a really good voice. But like, as he's walking or doing actions, it's just him talking you through his thoughts. So I don't know. Somehow it wins you over. I'm, I'm, I've had clarified. that. I don't know if this is just me <laughs> or everyone feels like this. No, no, no. I've, the, uh, on, on, I've had the conversation about the show with someone else who has watched it. Yeah. And they also said the same thing. They said like, oh, okay. but <laughs> I I usually have it. Can you imagine how big of a <laughs> creep? Like, what the fuck? Everyone's like, oh, this guy should die get arrested. I'm like, eh, you know, it's not that bad. seems like a sweet kid. <laughs> Killed a couple of people, you know. <laughs> Who doesn't? Casual. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Um, <laughs> but I've had always like I I usually like the villains of the stories. Like usually when there's any like any movie, like I usually do. I'm I'm a big fan of the villains. Who's the villain? Like your top villain? No, like throughout th- everything. Top villain? Yeah. Oh my god. Like if you give me like examples, like for example, let's say you have Bane. Watched, huh? Bane. I well, fucking love Bane. Yeah. But like, I have a. You know how everyone Hitler. <laughs> no. <laughs> Dude. No. 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 Store of movies. And stuff. <laughs> like no. 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 <laughs> I'm trying to like. Go back, like, bring it back. Like, like, listen, like, Harry Potter, I like Voldemort. Like, uh, Star okay. Wars, I like Darth Vader. You know, like, any, like, v- like the villains of the stories, I actually felt like there's much more to their character. Usually there is, because the good guy is always, like, Superman is just, he's good. There's no levels to it. Uh, Superman is unfair, man. In terms of, like, comics even, if you think about it. This guy is legit, like, can beat anyone and anything. He's a god. But, yeah, and he has, like, one weakness. It's, like, a fucking stone. It's not really that big a weakness, yeah. you know? Well, we come off, we come off as fucking nerds in this episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but, anyways, but, you know, like, if you like... No, but, for kinda, example, I like Dexter. Like, have you watched the oh, show Dexter? I watched a couple of seasons that it kind of... I just fell out of it, to be honest. Like, he had the same thing. He talked about how he felt yeah, in certain yeah. situations, and I really liked it. Like, and I was vouching for him. I was, I get, I'll get worried if he yeah, would get if I remember caught. correctly, he was a serial killer, but he would do it with a... Per- like, it was a guided thing, Yeah, right? he was a psychopath, and he was a serial killer, and, but how he His was father taught, taught him, yeah. yeah. To, like control his like urges was that he always killed the bad people yeah so that's justified. You know, justified and like hannibal lecter yeah. i loved 
that yeah, yeah like we've but, talked about uh, it the the thing about Superman. You said there's a cartoon on uh, Amazon, I think Amazon Prime. I think it's called the Inf- Invincible. I'll check it, but I'll let you know. But it's like a superhero thing, and there's a character that's very similar to Superman, but it's a dark thing, like cutting bodies in half. The superheroes fucking. I love Shapiro. punching their fucking fist through the guy's heart and pulling it out of their throat, like, like that Shapiro. kind of shit. I think you'd like that. You should yeah. watch that. I right, send me. Uh, speaking of Hitler, uh, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> no, that reminded me of Bert. Bert Kreischer. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> Jesus Christ! Okay, okay. Let me give some context of why I thought that. Yeah, way. I, I get it, but like yeah. maybe clap for okay, so. Listening. The comedian we, uh, Barry and I both like, his name is Bert Kreischer. We talked about him numerous times on this episode. Yeah. He has a podcast, and in that podcast, his best friend, another comedian, Tom Segura, as a birthday ga- gift, gave him a teacup that apparently there's a 99% chance it that belongs. it belongs to Hitler. Yeah. So that's why my brain made the joke. By the way, <laughs> that was such a good gift. And his reaction? Oh, my God. That yeah. was so Please good. never do that to me. No, no, no. You know, but I don't have the money for it because like yeah. the way he, he got it, like I think it, was it was like insane. 30, 40 k or something. Right? Something like that it was like through black market and like yeah. shit like that. That's yeah, I'm not gonna risk my life for for a joke. You know, like I don't think that's risking your life though. Uh, through going through those channels, meeting yeah. those kind of people, you could be put on a fucking yeah. But I, I feel like there's a lot more. I shit. mean, when they present it on the podcast, which is watched by like what at yeah. least like a million. Like that way, like it shows what the purpose was. It's not like no, but also I don't think they can hold you accountable, and you can just be like, "Oh, I lied for the podcast. It's fake. I just, it's not even Hitler's teacup. True. I just True. bought it from you know, yeah. I bought it from Home Center or some shit." Yeah. Bro, the funniest <laughs> part was like when he said he'll get Ari Shafir. The the Ari Shafir is another comedian we like, and he's Jewish. And he was like, I'll get him to like drink out of the cup. <laughs> and then I'll tell him that like, oh, by oh, the way. Oh, because he's a Jew. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> by the way, this is. Like yeah. that. Guys, just going forward in this episode, I think we're going to talk a lot about comedy. So the names we say, they're most probably comedians. And if you're interested in them, just search them up. Yeah. Because, yeah. It will give context a little bit about yeah. like what who they are and everything. But like these are like very popular comedians. So. Yeah, because it's. If you like our sense of humor, like you definitely, definitely, like, yeah. Because like, the past, from them. <laughs> the the past <clears throat> week, the past two weeks has been pretty big on like the podcast comedy like uh, industry. At least between the people we listen to, and also the next few weeks, it's gonna be pretty big for comedy. But yeah. uh, Joey Diaz, another great comedian, cool, one cool. of a kind. He's if people haven't seen his stuff, the only way I can describe it is imagine. Tremendous. The, the, <laughs> the typical Italian gangster from the 60s, like what comes to your head, like Sopranos, all of that. Yeah. But make him extremely funny and make his stories 10 times better, like his storytelling 10 times better than any Italian mobster movie you've seen. He's also, he's Cuban. Yeah, he's not even Italian, <laughs> yeah. Better, but like he was involved with the mafia. Not, not the known mafia, but he was in gangs. No, but he was also like when not, he was not l- the Italian mafia. When he was a little kid, Mm-mm. yeah. No, no, no. It was it was more like he talked about it even recently on the podcast he was on. He was saying that he was never connected to like the big mafia families. Okay, it's just in the neighborhood everyone knew of the big mafia families. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, maybe. I'm but just... even with the Italian mafia thing, you could never become a, back in the day. You could never be a member if you weren't Italian and part of like some someone related to the family. You have to. Like your parents be direct to send, yeah. like yeah, because like if you were, I think there's only been a couple of people that were like associate. You could be associated with them, but you couldn't be. They would call them made man, which means you're one of us now. You're not just associated to us. There's been only, I think, two three people in the five history of five families in New York that uh, were actually not Italian. Like yeah. one of them is called Sammy the Bull. If you don't know about him, no. It, okay. All right. This I don't have the whole fact sheet ready, but this guy was, a, I think he was a lieutenant for one of the families and killed somewhere between 30 to 80 people before he went to prison. He is still alive. 
one of the only remaining proven gangsters from those days and he was brutal like in terms of murdering people and shit and now this uh, this guy i forgot his name but he has a whole youtube channel podcast everything it's called valuetainment he's actually iranian yeah, originally iranian yeah i follow you know that, that guy. guy yeah yeah he for marketing tips yeah yeah but he his podcast for a while he leaned super heavy into mafia related stuff Shit. so he interviewed sammy the bull one once or twice after sammy was out of prison and then he interviewed this other guy called michael francesi if i'm not mistaken this guy was related to the mafia as well he was part of the families but he wasn't like a tough guy gangster he was more of a business guy and he basically defrauded the government the u.s government out of millions and millions of money by i don't remember exactly what the scam was but he would open up gas stations and just rip off the government like i'm saying like 30 million a week type of shit. damn then he went to prison as well anyways these two guys from two separate families they knew of each other but it, they didn't know each other he interviewed both of them individually he tried to put them both together each guy starts going at, uh, off at the other guy all of that they don't want to do the interview after fucking after a year of trying to convince them he puts out the guy that runs the valuetainment youtube channel yeah. he puts out a 10 episode interview it's a basically a podcast with them in a fucking villa in the middle of nowhere he just sits at them at the table 10 episodes i think each one is like 40 minutes long bro it is fascinating they both talk about their lives they call each other liars they call each other out becomes aggressive becomes friendly at the end gets to a conclusion they're okay with each other it's just if you want to know about that mafia family on type of shit that like you haven't seen on netflix these two guys are one of the only people that are real R proven high-ranking real members. life gangsters yeah that they and he got them to one room they talk about giuliani when you know who giuliani is right? no okay so giuliani right now he's basically a joke but back in the day, he was a, I think it was a district attorney in New York that basically ended them up. He came up with the, with the help of a lawyer, he came up with the law of uh, Rico. I don't know if you've heard of this. Yeah, yeah I know Rico. Yeah, that, that basically ended them up. I watched Powers. That's how yeah, I know exactly. Rico. Power or Sons of Anarchy. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, obviously. But basically, he was the guy in New York that went after the mafia he was super famous for it people in new york loved him for it to clean up the streets and all of that later on he became trump's lawyer and he became a joke oh, for fuck's sake. yeah but and even in this 10 episode thing th there's interviews with him they interview him and he was meant to come in the room and do it with them face to face but he chickened out of it pretty much i mean yeah kind of don't blame the guy like yeah I mean, but this is the best produced mafia type of podcast i've ever seen holy fuck yeah i missed that big yeah, this time. was maybe a year year and a half ago shit yeah yeah because you know how how i got to know the guy he had this bit about yeah. marketing and it was like in order for me to get to basically he said like you always have to think outside of the box and he said how i got to talk to these people the big people so i can start the marketing do marketing for them as my for my like my marketing company to work for them i sent them a single pair of shoe and i told them that and and the note i wrote this is how i got my foot at the door and now i'd like to talk to you and work with you yeah. and it was so outside of the box no, he's I, a genius that's how I, I literally because of that video i followed them yeah and i started like you know reading like watching his youtube tutorials about like marketing tactics how long shit. ago was this do you remember uh i started in like 20, I, 2020 2020 was this before you started your clothing brand or after no it was during that's how i did because the, i remember very clearly when you started i was trying to like help you with the marketing stuff right yeah. and i watched a video he had on guerrilla marketing on how you can do I it the cheap his, way yeah that's i how. sent you the link Oh fuck! It's yeah. you. <laughs> That's how I was trying to see. Like, when did you discover this guy exactly? <laughs> but so thank you. <laughs> yeah, if he's a millionaire, multiple businesses. Also, he's a war veteran. He's a really, really good guy. Like you can yeah. tell, he's a decent guy. Really good at like giving business advice. But also his podcast, 
he's interviewed everyone. If you're into bodybuilding, he interviewed Ronnie Coleman. If you are into mafia shit, he interviewed a whole bunch of mafia people. Uh, he has a full range of interviews with people. And he's shit. great at it. He's really good interview. Yeah. It's not like a comedy interview, no, no, I but like, the the people he's had on, especially yeah. for me, because I for a really long time I was really into the whole understanding the mafia thing, and especially this this ten, ten episode thing. This is not available on YouTube. I'll try to put a link in the in in the bio of what do you call it in the description of this video. Yeah, I think you had to pay like forty dollars or something. Damn. Yeah, but it was definitely worth it. Like Netflix quality produced, everything was really good. I'll give you my username. It's okay. <laughs> I got you. No, all you just yeah. Like, yeah. But how did we get to this? Joey Diaz. Oh yeah. Coco. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he has a new book out about his life story called Tremendous. Tremendous. Because I feel like the whole episode we're just giving free promos to shit we like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like just go and watch it. Honestly, so guys, get your notebooks out. <laughs> like, honestly, but like Joey Diaz, I feel like this is how you are the one who's like really insisted on like Joey Diaz, like for me to like get more into it yeah. and everything because like I, you said I would like him, and because and I I recommend for anyone who wants to get to know Joey Diaz and actually hear the stories that he says, you can buy the book. Auto, it's available in Audible or you can buy it physically, but uh, on. There's another podcaster and comedian that we really like called uh, Ryan Sickler. And he's an amazing interviewer. And he, his show, The Honeydew, he always says this is the story behind the storyteller tellers. So you get to hear everyone's stories of like how they, uh, how their life was. and it, Their it's upbringing, just, the how up, did they get yeah. to this. Yeah. And every, like, for example, he brings someone and during a two hour episode, they cover everyone's life. I think I'm on episode like 13 now of Joey Diaz and he's 26 years old. Yeah, and it, it, everyone comes in like one episode. The first yeah. 30 minutes, they cover like everything and then the rest of it, they're just shooting the shit. But with Joey, it, it took him like each episode that was like two hours, they would cover like four years of his life. Barely, but, man. Like, uh, it was let, like let me say this. This is something I told you as well. With Joey, this happened to me and I know this has happened to other people is that First, watch his like comedy bits on YouTube. Yeah. But when he was telling stories on Rogan and all of that, once you hear it the first couple of times, you're gonna think he's bullshitting because the stories are so outrageous. But I guarantee you, because I looked into this, every story he said, people have come out and vouched, vouched for it. For, for example, like he talked about kidnapping a guy and then to like 20, 30 years ago, and he actually brought the guy on his podcast and interviewed him. Mm -hmm. So all his stories are true. After you believe his stories, go watch him on uh, Honeydew that Barry just yeah. mentioned, and then you get his like full life story, like, detailed story. Yeah, like how he found his mom, like he was tripping on acid, and he found his mom like dead, dead in, in the, the kitchen. kitchen at thirteen. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's just insane. The like the craziest his, stories. When you said gas stations, I remember the story how he said I I used to rob gas stations, yeah, and, uh, yeah. go work for another gas station, rob another one, like go to yeah. his life story is insane. You know he's quitting podcasting. What? Yeah, I thought he was quitting stand up. No, he got back into stand up. Now he's quitting podcasting. What the fuck? Why is he so being so moody about it? Uh, I don't know. I think he's going through a phase. <laughs> but he said it on. Uh, one of the episodes I watched because he's going on like a book tour now, yeah. so he's popping out on popping on on every podcast there is. Yeah, and then one of them he said that I don't know why, but he said that he's not enjoying it anymore. He feels like the pressure and everything. So maybe because because he moved to New Jersey. Yeah, like he but he used to live in California, L.A., and then like he when Rogan went to Texas, like Austin, and like Tom Segura moved. And then Joey was like, I can't. He said this on flagrant. Yeah. He said that I didn't want to raise my kid in L.A. And this is related to one of the episodes we talked about the victim mentality. Yeah. He said, I don't want my daughter to be raised to be a victim. Yeah. Because he was saying in L.A. there's a lot of that mentality. Like the mentality is that, oh, my God, do this for me. Oh, my God. Like shit like that. Like he said, I don't want my daughter to be grown up a victim. I want my daughter to grow up to be a strong I know this is like a cliche, strong, independent woman. And like, what well, the way he put it was like, basically, I want my daughter to grow up to be a badass bitch that 
Yeah. She would be smart enough not to put herself in situations that people put her like in a situation that like she has to make weird decisions like the Harvey Weinstein type of people yeah. all of that. Yeah. So I when he moved to Jersey, mm. I remember because By like, the way, there's a lot of that here too. The victim mentality. I don't know if you've noticed it or not. Really? Yeah, like uh if you know it's it's kind of victim mentality not necessarily like it's kind of like I don't know if you come across this or not, but obviously in Dubai or in UAE there's a lot of rich people. But there's a lot of people who are on a world standard, they're living a good life, but compared to those top top people who live in Dubai, they they aren't there financially and like lifestyle and like the the stuff you see from bloggers in Dubai and all of that. Okay. You, know, you if you go into because of my job I've worked with like a lot of bloggers and like all of that, you see a lot of the same mentality that like oh uh, I, I like people don't give me this because I'm this. Although it's not true, you're just not as talented. They go that victim route of like, oh, because I have this accent, they don't give me the job. Or because I have this, they don't give me the job. You see a lot of the things they talk about in the US like community, people do it here as well. I mean, maybe not to that extent. Yeah. But like with the sexual assaults and like all of that, like no, I don't mean those. Not this but years. I mean like more in terms of like. I didn't get it because I'm so and so not because I'm. Yeah, me. like taking the envy and turning it into someone is doing it on purpose to me, instead of seeing it as oh this is the lack I have inside, and I'm just projecting it onto other people rather than looking at how they did it, admire it, and maybe say, take something positive away from it. I've noticed that. I mean, to be fair, I wouldn't say it's something that like, not trying to be a devil's advocate here. Like I'm not usually that kind of person, but like I'm saying like, it's my job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just to give a context, of, like a bit of a context towards this. Like when we were talking about some of the stuff, like in terms of creative works about like the podcast or anything else, I call Kurosh. I'm like, Kurosh, I'm going to tell you the, the concept you do your job and say the no parts. <laughs> like I think today you were like, well, hold up. Yeah, today, today was the first time on the phone that you put it that way. Yeah. That you're like, listen, I'll give you, I'll give you the idea. You do what you do and say no. <laughs> I'm like, fuck. Am I, is that what I'm known for now? <laughs> like, no, because like you, need, you always you, like <laughs> in general, you can't. You shoot for the stars, right? You need someone to shoot it down. You kind of need someone to bring you down level, like a level <laughs> down to re reality. <laughs> That so, doesn't yeah. make me sound great. <laughs> you know, you got the people who shoot for the stars. Then you got the people that shoot them. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's, that's it. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. No, no, no. But like it, in a business aspect, it's a very good uh, personality. Uh, sure, you find it tolerable. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't worry, yeah. I got you. <laughs> this is a good mix. It's like, I'm uh, a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what the fuck were that? Oh, I was saying that in general, like... Um, that kind of mentality that you're talking about it's not something that's like specific only to the states or like even here in True. general it's specific it's like applied throughout mm. culturally everywhere because that that's what it is like a lot of people got lucky not with the hot with doing the hard work yeah and because of that everyone just gets the concept that oh they got lucky no one, yeah, but no also one even values. Like, like we even talked to Abraham. Yeah, right? but like I wouldn't say Abraham got lucky. No, I mean, I'm sure there's some luck in it. But like what people do, like when we were talking about being shadow banned, right? Th that that's he was so saying that like yeah, there's a lot of video. Like Faisal was like, oh yeah, you don't get shadow banned, but like tell us about shadow ban. And he was saying that like almost every week. week yeah. yeah, it's just everything that people do behind the scenes. I'm not saying some people don't get lucky. Some people definitely no, get no, no. lucky. My example for Abraham yeah. is exactly that. I'm saying that people don't see the hard work. Yeah, exactly. And they just say that that kind of mentality is like the famous guy, the guy who's make, made it, has like this many followers and whatever is lucky. I am not lucky. That's why. Yeah. Like I am not getting it because they, this person has this fault. These people have this fault. They don't see the faults of their own. Yeah, like with Ibrahim, like uh, some of this discussion was on camera, some of it was off camera. But uh, what you don't see, like if you check his con check some of his content, he's yeah, he's sitting in front of the camera, he's talking to the camera. Uh, so you can look at it if you're looking from that perspective. You're like, oh, I can sit in front of the camera and do it. But what you don't see is 
all the hours it goes into reading your messages, see the story people send you. Yeah. Then trying to verify that story. Then try to write a script to make that story sound good on camera yeah. and like it's fluent. And fit it in the, within the yeah, timeline. Yeah, fit it within like, the timeline, which is way more difficult than yeah. you would imagine. Then after that, edit it and then upload it and then do this over and over and over again and, and build a following get recognized some of them get shadow banned after yeah, all exactly. that hard work so yeah, that, yeah. that's all of the stuff that you don't see behind the scenes so base th that that's what i'm saying like that kind of mentality is not something that's specific to anywhere else so basically um like i hate like the la part that he was saying is that like that's not i believe that when when someone gives up on a region like they'd say that oh this place they're all like this is because like you don't find that like oh 50 percent work hard to get to the goal 50 percent just one like a bunch of fucking bitches you know <laughs> right and that that the second that becomes the majority the majority is what always takes over and makes it a culture yeah so that that's i guess that that's that's the point of joy diaz uh, and that's why he moved to New Jersey, New Jersey and the, to the point of being at the beginning <laughs> 30 minutes ago yeah. Yeah. at uh, at the uh, <laughs> as in <laughs> like a fucking retard <laughs> like as in that like when he moved to Jersey he was complaining because it, when he moved he was like Ryan Sickler like they were having a like conversation he said that like oh I'm starting with a phone until everything fucking gets shipped here he has to do Wait, every like what when did you just the first interview, he had, like the continuation of the Joey Diaz story on yeah. the Honeydew, the Ryan Sickler's podcast. He was saying that like right now I'm doing it on the phone, like the podcasting and stuff oh, okay. until everything gets shipped and I have to set up. Yeah. Now he's a bit alone. He doesn't have as much as like maybe the kind of equipments and everything that he had previously. To be fair, doing a podcast solo is difficult. Oh man. Like for us, like obviously we're beginners and they're way more experienced than us, yeah. but, and obviously are funnier than us like all of that everything aside i mean he's like 50 so yeah he's and like also his 60. stories a lot more i'm like, lifestyle, yeah, lifestyle. Yeah. but for us like when it's two three people like we still have to like be like okay what are we going to talk about like all of that yeah but like imagine being solo in front of, uh, there's only like a few podcasts i've seen that are like that uh bill bear another great comedian he does a solo yeah he, uh chris D'Elia, i think for a while was doing a solo i think his podcast was called congratulations and he would I, just I talk to the camera. I've targeted by his podcast. But yeah. Like, have, like, there's so many that I'm so, listening bro, to. I found this new podcast. It's called Are You Garbage? Are you told me? Yeah. They tell, say it though, so like, the whole concept of this is there's two comedians that are not super well known, but they're really funny. And the whole concept is that you go on the show and they mostly bring comedians on. They ask them a whole bunch of questions, mostly like American culture related to <laughs> but just by the way can you put the camera on me so it doesn't seem like, like i'm pissing, pissing in the fucking yeah because uh, <laughs> i was like yeah, yo bro, like, good flow <laughs> like yeah. damn those are strong yeah. ass yeah. like yeah. fucking elephant dick over here <laughs> just, what was i saying oh yeah uh, so they bring uh, uh, and they ask you a bunch of questions to determine like when you were young how garbage were you <laughs> like white trash basic or not necessarily white trash just yeah. trash but I recently found this podcast randomly because I don't know who went on it. And they've interviewed like almost everyone we like. Andrew um, Schultz, Tom, Tom's, uh, Tom Segura's wife, uh, Bert, Bert's wife. Uh, oh my God. Um, Bert's wife, Leanne, used to go to school barefoot. barefoot so I yeah, feel like she's white trash. Like, she's white trash yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Like he was saying, like on the one of the podcasts, he was saying that, like, if you call her a redneck, she's not going to get offended. But if you call him Hillbilly, it's just gonna be like, who the fuck you calling Hillbilly over <laughs> here, man? Yeah. Yeah. Play. Speaking of Bert. Yeah, let's go back to Bert. Because yeah. we're talking about comedians. And, like, I genuinely want to say this. And this is what he's been really, like, uh, emphasizing on as well. And when this episode comes out, his movie's already out. He is if one of the first comedians to properly do a movie. I'm not. We're not talking about Kevin Hart here. We're talking about like proper comedians that like are fully starring in a movie and the movie's about them because like you don't see that anymore. And we're saying that that's like it's actually they had an episode on Two Bears, like the the podcast that Bird Two Bears and Bird Crusher and Tom Segura have together. It like it was actually titled Rise of the Comedians because this is gonna like boost the comedians to get back into it and come back. Because yeah, think about it, like even 
Kevin Hart movies, right? Yeah. They're labeled as comedy. But do you ever laugh that hard at them? No, no. Uh, I think that the, the last... What the fuck is up with me with this uh, retardation? Retard, retardation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, just accept it. The nation of the retard. <laughs> So, but I think I'm trying to think the last Kevin Hart movie that I genuinely laughed out loud. Jumanji, at. I laughed. Jumanji, yeah, the Ju- second one especially. The second one and and the first, first one. one, yeah. But like the one that first one that comes to my head is I don't know if you watched this. It was a while ago, but a uh, forty year old vir- virgin. Yeah, yeah, that I've watched there was a while. scene that he comes in the shop, and there's another uh, the the guy sir, like he comes as a customer kevin hart comes as a customer and yeah. then the other guy he's another black guy he's the works there and then it suddenly goes from like a customer care type of conversation to like full-on like gang style like conversation <laughs> that's the one that pops in my head right away that i was like genuinely laughing at it but like the comedies aren't like comedy movies anymore no, right. like, but here's the thing, like, with the, the example you're making right now, yeah, it's Kevin Hart featuring in a show, in a movie. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He wasn't like fully involved. Like, yeah. uh, what, what's his name? Steve Carell. Yeah, I mean that he's a guy. Yeah. The, no, I'm saying the like, that guy? movie yeah. is a, he's a star. You know what I mean? He's True. a main character. Yeah. So, like, the reason I'm saying Jumanji because Kevin Hart is one of the main characters. Yeah, like one of the times that I really liked, and it's actually like recently, it's been like trending a little bit, like Kevin Hart's features in the parody movies. Because before there used to be so many good parody movies. They don't build, They don't make them. Any, do I, they? I I went on Reddit actually. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I no, it's it. never good. <laughs> no, I I searched and I was like, yo, like what happened to parody movies? They said that like they already have this sense of humor about like the shit they do. Okay. So it's not going to be as good. And there were two producers, directors, writers. I don't fucking know how to, how they were labeled. But these two apparently put out such shit parodies that fucked up the whole thing for that everyone killed else. killed the genre. That killed the genre. Like, imagine how shit of a movie you have to produce, mm-hmm. like, put out, that kills the genre that was so good. I like, remember one of my best, like, I fucking love parody movies. Like... Yeah. The Screams. superhero movie, the scary movies, like 300. 300 well, oh my god, the parody of that. I don't think many people saw that. No, a lot of people know. In Iran, it re- I was in Iran when that came out, yeah, and that, that really popped because Iranians really hated the movie 300, the actual it movie. Was villainizing the, the old Iranian king. Villainizing the per- is the right word, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Villainizing the actual Persian, Persian Empire. Yeah. So when it came to When the that, parody came out, it Blew up in Iran. So I, we watched it over and over and over again. I think culturally, like in in Iran, like the parody movies were a big deal. Like it was one of the sh- movies that we watched. I, I don't think, think there's it was two as aspects common to it. here. I think it was funny, but also the language wasn't as hard. True, I could be. Like it was very simple English in parody. Yeah, it was, silly. Yeah, it was, it was like, silly. Even yeah. if you didn't understand it, like. When in the parody of the movie 300, when you see there's a war scene and then they start having a dance off in the middle, yeah. you don't need to understand English <laughs> to see what's funny. happening. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh my God, the gay or, part. <laughs> the, gay <laughs> part <laughs> the best part was uh, when his wife, the main character's wife, wants to like seduce him. I don't know if you remember this or I not. Don't. So she lifts up her shirt as if she's going to show her, you know, goods. Yeah. <laughs> goods. <laughs> I don't know how to roll. <laughs> Fuck. She's wearing like a golden lockbox around it, and he has to try to like find the passcode to it. It's a good ass fucking yeah. movie. But I can't wait. I'm hoping Bert's movie is kind of like Again. that real, like hits hard comedy. Like at the end, it's one of the first movies that a comedian is a star, and it's gonna bring back the com- comedians into Hollywood. Yeah, and like it's that's what they were saying, like rise of the comedians, and even like his another recent podcast that. Um, a movie uh, producer uh, guest on it uh, was Kevin Smith, and they were talking about like how to make like Hollywood fun again. You know, like Hollywood needs to go back to that shit. Not like oh, we need to have this kind of a character. We need to oh, fuck. We need, we need to have fucking this other ki- kind of character just to like please like, fucking everybody. Yeah, just no, typecast. make it funny. You know, yeah. like if it's like 
people have been such like everyone has a fucking cactus up their ass like they're just so fucking stiffed up that like they can't fucking laugh or enjoy <laughs> this anything. This is a new term you've added to your vocab, and every time it catches me off guard. It's like the second or third time you said it on the podcast. They have a cactus. By the way, it has become a common thing, and like it's been like is cool. it, you're the only person I've heard like say this. Like a cactus. You have a cactus up, up your ass. It makes complete sense. Like yeah, there's no like confusion. It's... But I just haven't heard anyone. Usually, mm. you just say you have a dick up your ass or like. But stick like, up your ass like yeah i guess yeah. but anyways, with cactus it's like it's like thick you can't move like, because yeah. fucking like you know well, it depends that you might be into it, you know. i mean i mean they might be but i mean the <laughs> ones that would like and move it are the ones who are always going to be pissed at those movies as well so yeah. let's be honest oh, can i like bad. sidetrack here yeah, yeah. when we're talking about gangsters can you like just realize the whole when we're talking about the whole cuties the lgbtq in our last episode HDMI TV kind yeah. of a thing so like imagine like the G in that right yeah is now categorized as gay okay right like so un- uh, you identify the G as gay so if you see a G you still think that okay think how much that fucked up the whole G unit gangster kind of a thing that the G stood for and now the gangster the G that stood for gangster is now stands for <laughs> I mean, I you're a gangster so. if you if you legit fuck up another dude, you know. But I like, don't, I don't think so because if you just say the word G, people don't automatically connect How it. How often to do you use that anymore? G, what's up, G? I used to. I use it still sometimes with old friends. With, with old friends that I used to say it when it was yeah, yeah. But now, like, think about it culturally. Like when the kids grow up, yeah. Now they are exposed to that rainbow. So yeah, legit, that G true. now stands for that. For us, G stood for gangster. gangster like if you call G unit fifty cents. Yeah, like, if you called your bro like G, yeah, what's up G? Like, like you were, were like, yeah. you were gangster. Yeah. You know, you don't just like throw. By the way, I don't know why we ever use that because we yeah. definitely didn't know any gangsters. <laughs> nah, no, definitely not. <laughs> like, <laughs> I think listeners can tell it, tell it from like the childhood stories we shared, we shared <laughs> on the podcast. Like, there's no gangsters in nah, our stories, throwing piss bags. And like <laughs> I don't think we shared that part. <laughs> we did share that. the piss oh. bag part. Yeah. Oops. Anyways, moving. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, so, but like, yeah. Faisal did that. <laughs> no, 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 no. We gotta cut that out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's um, not here to defend him. So it's on him. <laughs> Cheers up. <laughs> What's up with me today, man? I don't know what you're... Um, anyways, uh, going back to Bert, I'm so excited for the fucking movie. Yeah, man. same. I, the unfortunate I don't know how we're going to watch it, but... Is that it's not going to be in the theaters here. You know, the if uh, you watch the trailer, right? So for people who haven't, it's basically based on a story that he got famous for called The Machine. And he goes to Russia when he's young with the university and he gets involved in the Russian mafia. But in the trailer, uh, the movie is not about necessarily about when he was young in Russia. It's like now that he's older, the mo- Russian mafia finds him. Yeah. But the, I was uh, watching a podcast with Bert and the guy that plays his younger self in the in the movie. Jimmy like Tatro. Yeah, I don't know his name. Is that his name? Yeah, Jimmy Tatro. Yeah. I have a fun fact about him, by the way. Oh, okay. But I was just watching the podcast and it's crazy how good they casted him. He looks very similar to Bert, yeah. and when he switches it on, like the character, you could see it on the podcast come out sometimes when he's like trying to like make fun of Bert. It's you can see it like, oh shit! What if you take this Bert and just make his face younger, younger? it'd be this guy. Okay, well, uh, what do you know about him? So yeah. this is really funny because I I need to watch that episode actually. Basically, the casting was perfect because. Bert, as a person who drinks a lot and is just a party guy, mm-hmm. one of I feel like one of the rooted reason to why he's like that is because he was part of a fraternity. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, like an old school fraternity as well. The shit they did and all that. I'll get into it like a little bit. But now Jimmy Tatro, the guy who plays the young Bert, was also in a fraternity. And he was in Pi Kappa Phi. Which was my fraternity. He wasn't in the same university. Jimmy was or Bert was? Jimmy. Jimmy Tatro oh, okay. was in Pi Cap, and that's my fraternity, like the fraternity that I was in. Like, but but not, just a different universe, different branch. Yeah. So basically, every fraternity, you have like a lot. 
And so every campus has a bunch of them. Right. And but there are chapters. So basically, like Pi Kappa Phi chapter this is like in this university uh, one, one is in california no one. not just california that campus this, yeah yeah, and yeah another campus has another one and all of that and he was a pie cap so like every time i'd see him in a movie i'm like pie cap and then uh, like the fact that he's the one playing bird makes me so excited actually the only thing i know about uh fraternities is pretty much what i saw in blue mountain state Remember that show? Yeah, I love that show. Yeah, not the movie because the movie was terrible. The movie sucked. Yeah, but compared to the show, the show sucked, yeah, that yeah. show really. I mean, I don't know how realistic it is. I imagine they played it up a little bit. Uh, depends on, on the fraternity. On the fraternity and where you go. So, mm. for example, even so, for like guys is fraternity. Girls for sorority. girls sorority. Yeah. So basically, like for example, in California where I was. Sororities like a girl like could just be like oh I want to be part of you guys and everything but they're like okay you're part of us that's it wait so each fraternity is connected to a sorority no no like no. okay the like some are more friendly with each other they do events together and stuff like that but it's not like paired up together like, no but okay. not necessarily but in like for example in like that's the west side right in the east side like in like New York mm -hmm. I know someone who went to a sorority. And this person was like, it's insane. Like, basically, there's a pledge okay. um, phase. Anyone goes to pledge, they go through pledging, and then they, like, they get hazed. You go through a lot of shit. To kick out the weak, basically. What? To get rid of the weak yeah, or find the people that they think vibes with okay, them. Okay, so, like, I can vouch for this. Like, I think the pledging process is definitely a necessary process because okay. I don't... The, like a lot of people just look at fraternities as just like frat guys and like the ones who just want to party mm. yes you party all the fucking time and you have the time of your life but it's not necessarily that it's like the bond you have with everyone that's part of it and when you go through pledging it, it's like the hard work you put in to be part of something you're building your Picking like, your team, picking your community, basically. Exactly. Yeah. So, like, when you go through the experience with the people you're pledging with, you got you call it pledge brothers. So, like, you, the experience, even though it's just like one semester, the bond and like the experience you go through is not like any other, okay. you know. And the fact that when you re you reach the end of pledging and you actually go through the last week is called Hell Week. Mm. So you go through the f most fucked up shit, like just to, it's just can one week give, where it feels like fucking forever. Can you give examples of any? Or yeah, yeah, I'll give you an example. Okay. So when you finish that, it's like you value what you've earned and what you've reached Because so you worked much. for it. You worked so fucking hard for it. Yeah. And like, then you're part of this whole thing. Like imagine like when I, st where I stood, 80 people were st standing next to me. Yeah. And like, you feel like equal. You feel like you wear letters. You wear the same letters. You're like all part of each other. That came out wrong, but like all part of like <laughs> a, a sense of like. I don't know like what unity. kind of fucking fraternity you were in. No, not that kind. I don't want to like really like say. We're all up inside each other. <laughs> no, 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 I didn't fucking say that shit. Don't put that shit in my mouth. But basically, they put that shit in your mouth. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> so it depends. Like but going for the Blue Mountain State part, like it is. Some fraternities did that shit. Mm. Like I'm not saying they mine did that. You know? Like the crazy, crazy shit. Like the fucking Oreos up each other's ass and then you have to eat it after yeah, yeah, like yeah. you sweat and you run through a field. Like not necessarily that kind of shit. Not necessarily. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm saying like in general, like you have to do a lot of crazy shit, but I'm saying like... What was the craziest shit that you did that you can talk about it? I'll give... Shit, like... I'm not... Okay, I'll give you a bit of a context. I'm not going to talk about Hell Week because okay. I'm not sure if I can. Oh my god! Be, but I'll tell you this: before Hell Week, it was uh, Thanksgiving, so we had a break. So I flew to Virginia to meet our friend Omar. Okay. So because his whole family was there, I was gonna be there for Thanksgiving. So California weather is a lot like here. Yeah. Like it's hot. Like it's like good weather. Good weather, all chill. Virginia is fucking freezing, and Omar studied in Boston. Fuck. So that's like much colder than uh yeah, especially so, around like Thanksgiving. Like oh that. my god, yeah. bro. So like imagine I 
I'll wake up in the morning already wearing like fucking two and a half layers, like maybe a jacket. And then I'll like look at him. He's like standing in the balcony with a t-shirt, smoking mm-hmm. a cigarette. Okay. Obviously, I'm like, fuck this. I'm not a pussy. So I'm like, join them. Like, just go with it. I got the worst fever and flu fuck, okay. there is. And I flew back literally the day before Hell Week started. So I had, you know that like fucking powder you put in the hot water to mix for like the okay, cold and flu. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Sip, yeah. So imagine I was doing that and chasing with vodka because it was just like hell. That definitely takes away from the effectiveness of the medication. Bro, yeah. I was <laughs> just like fucking going through, going through it. it. So that's like, I, 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 again, like I'm not sure about the hell we, how much I get. In general, you do a lot of shit to test like how you are committed to like was it like physical challenges or mental or both like, okay so physical ones like physical and mental goes up up and much like by a lot is it like fitness like or fitness you have to like and the mental is like you want to be like broken down like a little bit like you mentally want to fuck with people to see like you you just like you said you take out the week yeah you know so that's that but like that's definitely like up mm. during hell week but uh man just like experiences was like it's just i can t- tell you about like one of the fun parts and everything like that like you do a lot of shit when you're like 18 you know that especially you if you're a group of 80 men yeah like oh boys yeah not even put men. five people five guys together yeah, they yeah. do the stupidest shit imagine putting 80 together yeah so like you I do mean i used to chase you guys with a pan on fire in our barbecues in high school <laughs> And that was just five of us. That's, yeah. that's the, I think that's the, like, so imagine that shit. Like, remember yeah. one of the events that we had. Like, I feel like that that that's after we, um, we got the bit. Like, we're we're in, and to celebrate, uh, or no, every fraternity part in our fraternity, each even between the eighty, like it's like kind of divided into yeah, drinking course. families. Okay. So you have like the gentleman club and like this and that, right? Sounds so in so order to get initiated into it because of the you have a big brother a person yeah. who like vouches for you so, so gay okay <laughs> fuck <laughs> so like they're part of a drinking family so you have to pass a test mm. of the drinking yeah just to get in drinking jam right yeah so like obviously <laughs> that, like not proud of it my just liver. to point out he has acid reflux issues now. <laughs> so And I string, still drink like a motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, if you're 17 and listening to this, consider that aspect. We're both 25, 26. <laughs> we both have acid stomach issues. Yeah. Stomach but drinking acid. is fun. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Responsibly. Uh, responsibly. Trigger yeah. warning. Yeah. Trigger yeah. warning. <laughs> but like you have the drinking family. So after you get into the drinking family, we go and celebrate. Bro, imagine we're fucked up because you did a drinking ritual, right? Yeah. Uh, we go to an ice rink, okay, with our shoes. Oh fuck! It's like Bambi on ice with s- hockey sticks, but with a rubber ball. Okay, and you just fucking go at it. Is the aim to score goals or to hit each I other? I don't remember scoring <laughs> goals. I remember getting hit with the thing right into my knee. With the puck or with the stick? No, there's no puck. It's a rubber be, ball. Okay, with the ball or with the stick? With the stick. Like, oh, just, I just fell down. Just, just thought there was a ball. So just fucking hit. You don't feel shit, bro. It's ice. You're on ice. Yeah. And you've been drinking like two bottles minimum. Yeah. Like, so you just go Numb at it. Numb everywhere. Yeah. It is. I just feel like every experience of it, like there, there was always like hard shit that you went through and all that. But like, everything was just sweet memory, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, and just like, I feel like it was an experience that... Anyone who wasn't part of it and said shit, I'm like, you don't know. So, like, if you're saying it, it just shows that you don't understand. See, and the I, thing is, if you're not in it, right? I, I was never, I no, never I, experienced first it. First of all, culture here, they're not familiar with it. So, if I no, said but anything, even, like, like, culture internationally, right? When you talk about American frat, frat society, right? Yeah. Or, like, how people look at it. All you see is the shit you see from the outside yeah. and what you see in movies. Obviously, in movies, they step it up, with like, a, a lot of the shit. But also, like, when you see a picture of fucking eight guys on a yacht wearing matching tops and matching shorts, yeah. looks gay as fuck. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and I don't mean homosexual. I just mean, yeah. like, what's another word for it? Uh, 
Yeah, gay as fuck. Gay as fuck. <laughs> I don't, I don't no, I don't mean like you stand in a row and fuck each other in the ass, but yeah, I mean like... Like a human centipede. <laughs> <laughs> like with dick and ass. It's <laughs> like, I get your point. Like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's actually pretty much what I was imagining. Yeah, it is gay as fuck, yeah. But like, that's all you see. You see like loud Americans... Yeah, but you feel. But like, what I'm sure, like once you see when you go into through experiences, it, the view completely changes. Like when I first got in, yeah, like first, like I didn't even know there was a pledging process. I thought I'm getting a bit, I'm in. You know, yeah. they were like, "Welcome to fucking pledging," and like the dude comes in, like there's a warden that is in charge of the pledges. He comes in, breaks the door down, walks in. He's like, "Welcome to hell." Like mm-hmm. that. That's how it is. Um, but. In general, the f- the concept itself is like is very valuable, and like the letters that you put on, you feel like you're putting on a uniform. So like when everyone wears it, you feel like you a sense of belonging. Of that pack. like like this is the this is the wolf pack. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you see anyone with that letter, you represent. Us. I see. I see why the idea would be like it would be attractive to s- certain personalities because in general, like especially with young men, you don't want to be alone. Most people, you want to be part of, a like pack. You, yeah, not necessarily even young men, just like men in general. Yeah. You prefer to be a part of a community, a pact, and like the fact that you have to work hard, to whatever it in, is, to get in, better, yeah. makes it that much more satisfying when you get in. I would assume. Yeah, it it's is. like it is if so you're being part of a big sport team. Yeah, you have to go sports through the testing. Have that kind of shit sports, too, military. Way. Obviously, I'm not comparing no, military no, no. to this. No, but, but like, like just the mentality around it because you know this uh when i was young from when i was in grade one till i came to dubai i had a group of like 12 13 i still do 12 13 yeah. guys that we were like very close to each other so i understand that idea of like the protection you feel when you walk somewhere and you know you have 11 other guys yeah. that no matter what they do whatever you want like whatever do we say this on the podcast where we stab them with the fork i think so yeah, let's not just leave it out. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, shit happens. Yeah. yeah. Brothers fight. <laughs> it wasn't even a fight. It was right. Actually, yeah. I saw some more. Well, now you gotta say the story. I mean, I mean, I don't know if we're repeating ourselves, but like, I went to Iran while he was there, and he was with five or six of the eleven people that he's mentioning. So here, we don't have the rule. Like, generally, him and I both we don't share food. We're not the kind of people who share food. But his food came earlier, and it was fried, and I was fucking hungry, so I'm going to grab one fry. Because he has this common thing among the friend group that you don't share food with each other. And if you share with one, you share with everyone. And I was not fucking aware of it. <laughs> when I went to grab the thing, with a metal fork, he stabs my fucking <laughs> hand. <laughs> and there's still a mark because it pierced thin, like... But I feel like I taught you a lesson that you pass on to your children. Um, You're welcome. <laughs> I'm just going to say, okay. <laughs> so you no, you're not going to. Well, I'm not the kind of person who shares food anyway. So, like, I can just take well, it. That would be a good that, like, story to tell your kids. So, they. I'm not going to mention names. So like, do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell them. Uncle K, if he's around, don't grab his food, kids. He's going to mean step. if he's around? <laughs> No, it, when he's like, if he's around. Oh, they think I'm dead. I'm like, God no, damn, bro. Man, like, how late are you playing off children? Or how unhealthy do you think I am? <laughs> I mean, we both have stomach acid at age of 26. Like, I, don't I don't think, think you die from. Can you die from. Can uh, you die from stomach acid? Depends on the level. I think there is a certain. All right. Well, thing. that's not concerning at all. No, no, no. Not to our extent like for sure, sure not us yeah i can feel it bubbling up right now in my stomach <laughs> like, fuck i'm gonna die Jesus. no no um what were we talking about oh but in general the like house. uh like the fraternities the concept the people the the experience itself was so much better than anyone that like if if they're looking from the outside looking at it is like very different and uh what I was going to tell you is that, for example, like that's why I was so excited about the whole Jim and Tatra thing because, like, you you kind of do, because he was part of Pi Cap, you feel like oh he's one of us. You know what I mean? Right. Like you know when black people see another black person like he's representing us, he's one of us. No, weird, no, no. weird turn, bro. No, but in general, you're like 
yeah, my my brother made <laughs> it. Do you know what I mean? It's not the same thing. No, no. no. I mean, like, it's sent. Okay, to a smaller <laughs> scale. To a smaller scale. You just compared six months of relatively challenging time plus a hell week. Yeah. Two. No, I'm not talking about <laughs> slavery, bro. I'm not fucking talking about that shit. Yo, don't don't mix that shit up. No, 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 no. Please explain yourself. Okay. What I meant is that, like, for example, okay, forget the last example. As an Iranian, okay, when you see an Iranian actor who, like, left the country and went to the States and went to Hollywood and now is, like, starring in big movies, you have that general idea that, like, you know what? My, um someone like from my country that had the dream and like went to hollywood made it you know what i mean so like it's not like oh in general you're just thinking okay an iranian person went to the country went to hollywood and now they're starting the big movies so like you feel like oh he made it you know what i mean yeah, I do. So the same thing with German Tate, or like when I see like it's just, oh, you picked a weird example. Yeah, yeah, that's a weird example. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I'm Iranian. I could have just said the Iranian thing from the beginning. Yeah, like, I don't know what you want, Black. Yeah, damn. <laughs> anyway, but Bert Kreischer, man, like I'm it, okay. Even for this, Bert Kreischer is comedian. Now he's doing his movie, so it's very sense of pride for comedians. Because they're like, oh, a comedian made, like, he's doing it. A big budget. A big budget like movie. Proper. He's the star. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, they've been having this kind of a, like, a perspective. Yeah. Like, when Rogan, now Rogan is, like, the mo, what's the mo, mo, most popular? Mogul? Mo, mogul? Huh? Mogul? Mogul? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For some reason, mogul, I'm like, what? <laughs> the mogul of, like, the podcast, right? Yeah. He's not the first one who started podcasting, no. but he fucking made it. And it's a sense of pride among the people that were with him from the beginning that they feel for that. Yeah. So Kevin Hart, they have this look for, uh, like, kind of, uh, like, sense on him. Like, Jim Jeffries, like, when he does Europe tours and just goes around, the con like, goes around, like, content from content to another, they're like, holy fuck, this guy made it. Like, there is a sense of pride. You know what I mean? True. Speaking yeah. of Kevin Hart, look, you know how we were talking about Kevin Hart movies? Yeah. One movie of Kevin Hart that I think, I don't know if it was underrated or people in art, like people around me didn't talk about it, was actually a serious movie he played. The Wheelchair? Yeah, with yeah. Brian Cranston. Yeah. I, that's his name, right? I don't know. The uh, Breaking Bad guy. Yeah, the Breaking Bad guy. I, I, I felt like that movie was really good and he was really? playing it, he was playing a serious role. Serious. It wasn't a, it was, it was like a drama movie. Yeah, yeah. I found that I found that movie very good. It was really like not movie. pursuit of happiness, good. Pursuit is one of kind. Of yeah, but like it was the same Smith, genre. Like still, like it's it's same genre though. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of Will Smith, not the same genre. Kind of. We're. It was talking about a man like, trying to get his life together to support his child. Yeah, but like the the whole there was like a bit of a I don't know. I feel like the same genre. Have, might the execution is not the same or the yeah, storyline okay, is not identical. Enough, fair enough, fair enough. Okay. But speaking of Will Smith, what the, the controversy around his wife and the show that she's like executive producer. Have oh you my heard? god, I'm so glad we're bringing this shit up. Okay, <sighs> fucking hallelujah. It sounds like you I'm know. So about glad this. it fucking tanked. Cause it tanked. It, I didn't know. It, I think it had two percent viewing and like I think rating like two percent rating. Like run rotten so tomato or something? No, I no, I'm I need to word it correctly to make sure I'm accurate, but from my okay, fuck it. I might be inaccurate. I'll pull shit. it up as you talk. But so when Netflix uh puts out a show, amount of people that go and watch the show compared to the percentage of the users, like decides on the success and the hype and the trend of the show, correct? I believe Cleopatra, his name of the show, had 2%. It's called Queen Cleopatra on Rotten Tomato. It has 20%, which is based on uh, the official reviewers, which they always give too high of a ranking. Okay. And then audience score is 3%. 3? Three? And this is based on 10,000 plus ratings. Okay. The twenty percent is based on fifteen reviews. No, fuck that shit. Yeah. We're talking about the three percent. Yeah. I'm so fucking glad that bitch's shit tank. What was the controversy around it? 
bro please like did we talk about this previously and i forgot no 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 no. Oh, okay. i said i want to talk about it before okay. it came out and the fact that it tanked and now we're talking about it makes me so much happier even okay because it's like i'm like it's so satisfying for someone like that bitchy and fucking cunty evil to be like that to fail okay so let me let me see if i have this right she was the uh, executive producer or some shit right she was she had a part in it yes like a big big part, part in big it. part yeah. in it not pl- not playing a role but in actually making the thing yes okay and the controversy i remember hearing about it correct me if i'm wrong was that uh instead of picking an actress that is what do you say historically would be from the region that Cleopatra. the story would be from yeah. Cleopatra is greek greek yeah okay uh, can you check if uh, i'm, I'm pr- greek I, I just don't want to like now that we're like fuck like actually talk about how inaccurate it is i don't want to be inaccurate while saying it. it's like i think she was from egypt wasn't she yeah no. she was from egypt she was queen of kingdom of egypt yeah i, I think i know where you got this wrong she, the the character is from egypt but instead of them casting an egyptian person no, or no, someone the from, whole cast is black okay 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 I understand Egypt is in yeah. Africa, but none of them are black. No, I know, but I think the main character was from Greece. Hold I up. think that was the controversy around it. No, 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 no. It she was cast a black, like African American people, as the cast of the show. But sorry, I'm, I'm yeah. going on it. We can like we'll cut, cut this so, and then come cut, back. Yeah, yeah. All so, right, we're back with facts. Right, yeah, we're back with fucking right, facts. Go so. Yes, she was queen. Like she was like in Egypt, but she the her she's descendant of Greek. Okay, okay. so she can't be African American. I understand where you have to cast African Americans and stuff like that, but we're not talking about that shit right now. Yeah, we're talking about the fact that this bitch. Right. Don't say African American. Just say black. Okay, you don't have to cast African Americans for Cleopatra. Like there's no American. No, I'm, I'm but, just saying like yeah. whatever. Like however you want to say it, but like this show evolves around this person who is greek descendant of greek and yeah. this no greek okay it's daughter of greek and a daughter of a greek and she casted the black the whole black a black cast mm. which is so inaccurate and think about it as a movement itself yeah so you want to jump on a hype to have uh people of color kind of a cast to because like that's the move now right no, in, see the 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 thing was like back in back in the day in Hollywood, it was that they wouldn't give black people the roles that were meant to be for them. So there yeah, was they roles of blackface and shit like that. Yeah, like blacks those. or like sounds weird when I say yeah, it like that. <laughs> I don't say blacks. Yeah, but <laughs> like they would have a white guy play an Asian guy, a white guy play a yeah. black guy. Like they would just not give the roles to the minorities that the role was clearly meant for them. Then the movement was to correct that which is rightfully so do that yes. but then her being one of the voices of these types of movements and like always talking about her blackness and the black the black and like all that shit <laughs> again this sounds super bad sound bad man <laughs> no, i know you, but like i don't you mean, do it. your message <laughs> is good your delivery is horrible the delivery is really wrong no but like i have like obviously the the movement was right till that point but then when it came to the other way that like but she did it in the wrong way. Yeah, like so you have you, to... The yeah. one role that you have to cast, whatever the role requires, you didn't. You, it's it's the fact that you have to realize also in, in terms of a movement, mm. if anyone is against the movement... I still can't believe I said that word. <laughs> that yeah, was so inappropriate. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's okay. Yeah. The intention that was good. I hope that comes across. <laughs> well, I'm saying it. Guys. So... The thing is that when when there's a movement about towards like a certain thing, whatever it may be, when it's done in a wrong way, that's Takes highlight away from the movement. It oh, okay. it yeah. goes against it. Yeah, it, and it gives a tool to the people who are like trying to fuck it up. Also, yeah, to like use, use it as it. excuse. Use yeah. it like oh now this shit and all. But that. do you know if the show tanked? because of this like people were against it or was the show actually shit i obviously not gonna watch a fucking show but oh. i know that like one no one's a fan of this person right 
wow, that was the nicest thing I've ever yeah. said about her. Even cunt. The, no one's a fan of this cunt. And like, that can be one. Two is that doing it wrong. Bad publicity. Bad publicity. And at the same time, I believe a lot of people boycott it. Like a lot of people mm. did not watch it because of that. Fair enough. So right, rightfully so, man. It's like so. I sad. saw it pop on Netflix. Just like again, I've Bro, heard so it's much on Netflix. Yeah, it's constantly trying to show it. Trying to like is it recommend. made by Netflix or is it Netflix Nef- true? Oh shit! So they're not getting their money back. That's why they keep pushing it. Oh, because it's only aired on Netflix. If it's only aired on Netflix, that becomes a Netflix show technically, right? See, like Netflix doesn't just buy. No, there's there's two types. They either from beforehand they give the budget, they say go make the movie as a Netflix original, yeah. or they just see something that's good. Either it's old or it's uh, they just see it like they didn't have a chance to buy it before, or they just want to see the concept being proven, and then they buy it after the fact. But I don't know uh, which one this one is. It might be original or it might be... If they're pushing it really hard, it probably is a original show that they're trying to make their money back on. It says Netflix Queen Cleopatra. So, And it's a documentary, man. That's the oh. problem. No, it's not a show. It's a, that, that's another oh, I thing. I thought it's a, like a no, show no. around that If it that was term. fictional, maybe you can use that as an excuse. Like, yo, yeah. like, chill your tits. Like, it's, it's not like a, that much. Wait, what did you just say? Chill your tits. Oh, I thought you said chubby tits. I'm no. like, what, is it? what no, does no, it no, no, no. Oh, chubby tits. You know, <laughs> move on. No, no, no. It's like, chill out. Like, it's not. Oh, well. You with the cactus up your ass and the chubby tits. <laughs> I mean, I do say random shit, man. Like, but I like that the word diddled got introduced to it. Uh, oh, it's it comes up a lot. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Kevin's face. I think like three, four episodes ago. I said diddled. You were like, oh, no one else uses that. Yeah. But now. Last episode, you just dropped it randomly, like without <laughs> any hints or anything. Yeah. I feel like the AI thing kind of like also confirms it into my vocabulary. When oh, so it's just not me. The, uh, yeah. The, I mean, I mean, the AI is not the best. Like, <laughs> yeah. But. I wish more people saw that AI episode. It not, not because I want us to get more views, but I feel like that AI really needs more publicity like it, was, it was it was a cool experience it was definitely cool. Um, yeah. we're gonna have him again like yeah hopefully her in, in a while referring that to the ai as her a lot so i feel like it's yeah. her I, I don't know he him she, she her, yeah, them, 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 them. should but we end it here yeah. for this week yeah all right thank you guys for watching this episode of the podcast don't forget to like subscribe and also comment any suggestions you have uh down below <laughs> don't forget to why are you staring at me like that? I don't know. What is <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, when it's it, two people, it's really hard. Yeah. Like you're just, like, I just <laughs> felt your eye on me. <laughs> if you guys like our content, uh, check out our social media accounts and stay up to date from there on our new episodes. And <laughs> we will <laughs> see you know next week. Like you're so fucking distracting. <laughs> just look at your phone or something. <laughs> All right. See you guys next week. See you guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.